They say, if you gaze long enough into an abyss, the abyss will gaze back into you. So back in February of this year, I did a video about Finding Nemo and why it has so many ripoffs. But there's another franchise that gets ripped off quite often. Kung Fu Panda. I'm mainly doing this video because I get a lot of people who request these movies for reviews. So I figured, hey, let's just do it all in one big video. Knock them all out at the same time. That way things don't get too repetitive with me reviewing one bad panda movie, and then another bad panda movie, and then another bad panda movie. Trust me, I'm doing you all a favor. Before we talk about these awful ripoffs, it only makes sense to talk about the source of all of this plagiarism. Kung Fu Panda, a trilogy of movies that was made by DreamWorks. For the record, I'm gonna keep this brief. Talking about Kung Fu Panda and what it's done can be a video in and of itself. So if you wanna watch something about that, go check out Cosmo's video. He did a great job talking about the trilogy and everything about it. But here, for this video, <laughs> we're gonna hit up the shitty stuff. Hey man, sheesh. What's your problem, man? Gosh, take it easy. Huh? The first Kung Fu Panda movie was released in 2008, and it did very well with both critics and financially. And it would go on to become one of the main pillars of DreamWorks animation. I love it because the folks who made this movie wanted to make something fun but authentic to capture the culture and history of China along with a genuine approach to Kung Fu. In that regard, DreamWorks did a fantastic job. So much so that the Chinese government itself went, why didn't we make this? How did some American studio make a better movie about China than China? I also love that one of the main inspirations behind this film was Kung Fu Hustle, which is arguably one of the cartooniest live action movies ever made. Again, check out Cosmo's video if you want to learn more about Kung Fu Panda. But for this video, all you gotta know is that Kung Fu Panda became one of the most popular animated franchises in the world. And unfortunately, that caught some people's attention. You thought I... <laughs> I was really talking about... <laughs> Sorry, kid. <laughs> it's been a kick in the head. <laughs> okay, so let's go over these awful panda clones. Just a heads up, I'm gonna keep these reviews short, sweet, and to the point. If I don't, they'll all just morph into a giant black and white ball of garbage. <laughs> This is gonna hurt me more than it hurts you! So our first ripoff is Chop Kick Panda from 2011. The story is about a panda named Zebo and how he has dreams of becoming a legendary kung fu master. And if you have any doubt that this movie is ripping off Kung Fu Panda, well, just watch this scene. Legend tells of a legendary warrior whose kung fu skills were the stuff of legend. There once lived a legendary fighter. A fighter so legendary that his legend was legendary. Downright shameless. So this janitor panda has a son, and he lies to him about being a kung fu master. A bunch of the son's friends come to sleep over at the dojo, but then they get attacked by two villains. Zebo the panda then wears a magical amulet and becomes the dragon wo uh, uh, the, the, the chosen one. Got a few complaints about this movie. First off, the panda sounds like Peter Griffin. I, I don't know if it's just me, but that's all I hear. Hey Lois, remember that one time I became a panda? I hate to interrupt this love fest, but have you seen Grandmaster Han? Chopkick Panda is a blatant ripoff, but somehow, by some miracle, it's also incredibly boring. Just a bunch of static characters standing around, combined with dialogue that falls back on pop culture references. And I mean that. Like, they're bringing up Star Wars characters. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. For the love of Pete, 
don't start with the Yoda quotes. You did that when we were kids and it drove me bonkers. And here's the thing, folks. This is one of the better ripoffs when it comes to quality. Yeah, things are going to get that bad. You really know how to raid people. Wait, what? After that, we have Kung Fu Rooster. Check it out. We're mixing it up with a chicken instead of a panda. Released in August of 2019, this is the most recent example of Kung Fu Panda plagiarism. But that isn't too shocking, coming from Wow Now Entertainment. Just look at the collection of trash. Oh, uh, funny pets too. You actually made something worse than Illumination. That's impressive. Not funny. Kung Fu Rooster is about some kid being trained by a rooster to be a Kung Fu master so he can defeat the purple monster thing that I don't care about. First off, this movie is confusing. It starts off with a recap from a previous film, which I had no idea that this movie was even a sequel. I think it's part of an ongoing movie series called Kung Fu Masters, but all of the info and context about it, I can't find it. They just released the films without any kind of direction of how to watch it. It is super confusing. But what about Kung Fu Rooster? Well, it's boring. Incredibly boring. Now you're boring me. The movie does a poor job of making me care about the characters and what's at stake for the story. The villain, purple lion guy, is going to take over the Sacred Valley. I don't give a f You will be very pleased to hear that we have found the brat Hoffman Lord, yeah? Yeah? You got unappealing character models, laggy movement, fake slow motion, and for some reason, these voice actors have a very strange cadence. They pause like this while they talk in their sentences. Also, there's a character in this movie too who sounds like Peter Griffin. Why is this a recurring theme? It shouldn't be. You're such a big boo-boo head. When the end's done with Hoffman, we'll hand over these chickens. Then you and me will be on easy street. Next, we have The Legend of Kung Fu Rabbit from 2011. So I think that the Chinese government helped with the creation of this one since the Beijing Film Academy is a state-run establishment. And again, I just can't understand why this movie is about a rabbit and not about a bear. I just can't put my finger on it. Kung Fu Rabbit is the most competent movie on this list of ripoffs, but that's not saying much. The models look like they're from a TV show as far as the quality goes, and the movement of the characters is passable. And the voice acting isn't terrible either. Scooping up the dough and tossing it in the air. Little by boop, boop, spinning all the dough. You know what? No, I, I was wrong. It's bad. And why the hell is Rebecca Black in this movie? She's a voice actor? I didn't know. You guys can do better than this stuff. Quit ripping people off. Get out of here. Jeez, that's pretty hard. Oh, come on. You got Michael Clark Duncan for your movie too? He's already gone but the tablet will be mine. Your prison may not be adequate. Oh, and there's Napoleon Dynamite as well. You're in a lot of bad movies, dude. But what about the story? We have this fat rabbit who randomly gains Kung Fu powers from some dying monkey master. No, it's not Moses. He then has to go deliver some message to this cat character. One thing leads to another, and he defeats this evil panda on accident. See? The, the panda's the bad guy. Our movie is completely different. This movie felt the most like Kung Fu Panda with its story, characters, and setting. It also has a sequel that looks much better than the original. I literally discovered this while writing the script, and I did not have time to watch it. But I might have to double back on this one. <laughs> After that, we have The Adventures of Panda Warrior from <laughs> Legend Toonland from 2012. What an interesting filmography. And out of all of the ripoffs on this panda plagiarism list, this one is the most outrageous. You got terrible motion capture, soulless background characters, fart jokes, animation clipping, fake slow motion, an over-the-top story that's incredibly hard to follow, poor voice acting, 
and probably some of the most clashing character designs I've ever seen. They all look like they're from different movies. And get this, most of them show up in a single scene. It's f***ing bonkers. <laughs> The story goes like this. Rob Schneider, yep, it's one of those kinds of movies, is a human soldier who turns into a panda and goes to the magical world of Maryland. Ma Mary land? Ma maybe it's Baltimore. A peaceful place where people live in harmony, and it's called Maryland. You're one ugly motherfucker. He then meets a ninja pig with flesh tendrils on her head, and she leads him on some random adventure. Not so fast. Hey, where are you going? With the help of the Seven Wonders, they go off to, okay, follow me here, defeat a cosmic whale that was taken over by a mouse that then transformed into a nine-headed snake. Transforming himself into a terrifying nine-headed snake. He was too powerful for anyone to resist. I, I don't know. I, 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 that's the story. Like, I'm being real with you guys. This film is the definition of insanity. And I'm pretty sure a four-year-old kid both wrote and directed it. <laughs> then there's the little panda fighter. This is probably the most infamous of the Kung Fu Panda ripoffs. And I can understand why. It's f***ing ugly as hell. And for those who haven't seen this film, whatever you think this movie might be about, it's not. The story is about Pancata, a janitor at some boxing restaurant. His boss, Polaris, wants to fight in the boxing ring, but can't because he signed some kind of contract. So the boss disguises himself and fights in the ring while everybody thinks it's the panda. And the panda thinks that everybody stoked on him because of his dancing. But then he discovers the truth. How'd it go, boss? Did you win the fight? Not exactly. You won, kid. I mean, I won. You see, that costume you wore shrunk so bad, I didn't look like a polar bear, I looked like a panda. And let me guess, everybody thought it was me up there, right? You nailed it on the head, kid. And here I thought they were all excited about my dancing. He then, for some reason, wants to fight against a challenger and threatens his boss that he'll blow the whistle on him. I'm not letting you near that ring, you got that? I fought Thunders the last time, I'm gonna fight him this time, and I don't wanna hear any more from you. Mr. Polaris, I am prepared to blow the whistle to everybody, including the papers, unless you unconditionally allow me to go into the ring against Teddy Thunders. He then goes through a training montage and uh, gets his ass kicked. But his boss figured that this would probably happen, gambled a bunch of money and put it on the challenger, took the money, skipped town, and gave the establishment to the panda, who then turned the place into a dance restaurant. Yep. <laughs> For a movie that's trying to copy Kung Fu Panda's vibe, this story couldn't be more opposite. And the voice acting is something else. Like, you got Dan Green from Yu-Gi-Oh, along with the voice of Meowth, too. Wasn't expecting that. Just like when you were fighting Polaris, no one could beat you either. You were champ for three years until you retired and opened this place. Outside of the terrible story, you also have bad delivery from the voice actors, a boring setting with lackluster background assets and textures, repetitive music, god-awful edits that mess with the flow of the story, and then these nightmarish character designs that look like a bunch of Five Nights at Freddy's rejects. <laughs> well, that was unexpected. You know that I'm just... I'm just Pancata, right? The same old me, you know? <laughs> and finally, we have The Prodigy. I just want you all to know that I had to order this movie off of Amazon. Yeah, I am that dedicated to you all suffering alongside me. This is easily the most boring of the selections on the list. There were large chunks of the movie where nothing happened. Heck, they don't even explain the characters or their motivations until like 20 minutes into the film. Yeah. Get off of me, you dummy. So we have this anime girl and her Kung Fu Panda master. The girl gets a crush on this prince guy. 
But then he randomly gets kidnapped by some people. The girl and the panda go off to rescue him. And we're told about the Dragon King and how he's the one keeping the prince hostage for whatever reason. By the way, the villain wasn't mentioned until 30 minutes into the film, and we don't see him until an hour in. And this is literally how he dies. Bye-bye. So what else do we got? Well, not to sound repetitive, but bad character designs, bad movements, god-awful voice acting, crappy music, dead eyes on characters, a lot of clipping, and a layer of fog over the visuals that continues throughout the entire film. Oh, and one of the characters sound like Dexter from Dexter's Lab. You are stupid. <laughs> that, was, that was awful. If the prince was not out carousing with you, this would have never happened. You're beneath him. Where there was too much going on in Adventures of Panda Warrior, the opposite happens here. Nothing happens. They do a very poor job of establishing the characters and an even worse job with the story. Give me a reason to care about this anime girl. Why should I care about this prince who I know nothing about? He just shows up, gets kidnapped, and I'm supposed to care about that? I don't know how they made this a 77 minute long film. It's utterly ridiculous. Oh, and according to the cover of this movie, some of the animators and artists who worked on Shrek and Shark Tales worked on this movie. But for the life of me, I couldn't find out who. Maybe they wanted their names taken off of the credits. And I don't blame them. It's actually kind of sad because I watched some of the behind the scenes stuff for this film and the character designs aren't that bad. But dear Lord, did they drop the ball. I spent a lot of time at the zoo. I'm studying animals from life. And as I moved on from there, I ended up becoming pretty good at it. Oh, you be careful how you talk to KG, you old fart. What? Okay, so why are there so many Kung Fu Panda ripoffs? I asked this question during my Finding Nemo video, so it only makes sense to ask it here as well. Also, it's the title of the freaking video. Duh. Honestly, it's pretty simple. Money and avoiding copyright. The first reason is a no-brainer. Whenever something popular is created, there will always be imitators. Those who want to ride the tailcoats of success with the hope of being noticed for one reason or another. Maybe grandma bought this movie for you by mistake. Or perhaps you thought, hey, maybe this is a sequel. Or maybe you just want to watch it to rip on it. But honestly, who does that? As far as copyright goes, these companies and studios know how to walk the line and create something that is similar to the original property, but different enough to avoid being sued over it. Oh, no, no. This, my good friend, is the Little Panda Fighter. It is completely different. Time out! Oh, somebody get him off of me! But why couldn't there have been one ripoff that was good? Something of substance that doesn't steal from Kung Fu Panda, but is instead inspired by it. What is this? Oh, okay. Y you, yeah, you. Great warrior wall, is it? Yeah, you're getting your own video. See you all next week. Finally, a worthy opponent. Our battle will be legendary.